draw us to focus on you. Draw us into your presence. Help us to know what it is to be your body, your beloved, in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing <laughs> hymn number 634, The King of Love, My Shepherd is. sins, and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the living of malice and wickedness, that we may always save you, owners of your living and truth, through the mercies of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Peace be with you. 
Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.
that they started to build halls, which where they went to worship. And of course, halls became community buildings. We know that. We have uh, the evidence in our own churches, particularly at Penn Rice, that was used as a court. They were used as markets. They were used in every way for the community. Monasteries were built and they built chapels. Or they went to places and built like this church, which was more or less a wayside shrine to start with, a place for a hermitage, placed by a holy well. And we've got so tied up that we have misunderstood the word church. Ecclesia meaning a gathering of people. And I was wondered how did we move from this New Testament model where Jesus stands in a room and says to his disciples, his followers, the men and women around him, receive the Holy Spirit. And it's this binding and loosing which I've talked about that whatever they hold will be held true and built up with the power of the Holy Spirit to do that with them. Or whatever they want, they decide is not good for the church then they themselves will be responsible for building the church in that way. We have this awful vision, really, when people think that they read this passage in John, think, oh, somebody out there might decide my sin's unforgivable. But it isn't so much that, as it's our responsible as priests to tell you that your sins are forgiven, and they really are forgiven. And if we do that badly, people go around with a guilt complex. We don't want you to do that. <laughs> We are meant to tell you that you're forgiven. How did we move from the New Testament model where they met together in a place in their thousands, we're told, certainly their hundreds, they shared everything together and they added thousands to their number every day. Can you begin to see a picture? We build our churches and we have these little communities here and all over the place. And how many do we add to our numbers? Messy church meets in a hall somewhere. It brings everybody comes in together. Methodists, Anglicans, Catholics, they all come together. Mums and dads bring their children from all different religions and none. All come together to messy church and it grows and thrives. What is it saying to us? What is the spirit saying to us at the moment in Gower? It's a devastating thing for us to discover that so many clergy are, uh, if you like, moving on in different ways. It's a bit of a shock to have lost probably six clergy in less than 18 months. Very careless of you all. <laughs> You know, it's happened. But fortunately, you don't didn't, we don't rely on clergy. I want to back my fist on this one. We don't rely on clergy. Our faith is not built on clergy. Our faith is built on the living presence of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And it's Him that matters. It's Him. And if we go to His model of church, we go to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your name is to be holy. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom is to be here with us, in our midst. There are many, many churches now doing what you're doing, which is building up food banks food. There are churches that are open all day and people come in for coffee. The homeless come in and shelter. There are churches where they go out and send missionaries abroad. There are churches where they have schools in them, nurseries in them, anything which helps their community. Their church becomes a living, breathing community and grows because people will adhere themselves to something that they see as growing and living. I wonder if some people have investigated and tried to advertise the church and put big advertisements on 
And people who are into advertising and marketing tell you actually you've got to change the substance because anybody who comes and checks you out has to discover in the substance something that makes them come back again. We have Christ. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. We need nothing else. And we worship Him. We honour Him. We celebrate His kingdom by loving one another, for caring for one another, meeting together to worship Him. One of the things I think in the development of all of this, of how we should be church, is that the loss of the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Because for many years, I mean, I was told as a young person, um, we don't place much importance on the Holy Spirit, it's Jesus that counts. But the Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us everything about Jesus. We can't know Jesus if we don't have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that we need to depend on more, to understand Jesus, to reveal him in our lives, and to help us build the kingdom of God in Gower. By losing that, at sight of the Holy Spirit, we wandered up a lane where we call bricks and mortar the church instead of ourselves. To grow a church, we need to get the substance right. When visitors, wonderful to have visitors with us, experience the kingdom of God, they will tell us they feel welcomed, loved, and they belong, which they do because if Jesus is present here, to everybody belongs to Jesus. So nobody can feel left out, we pray. If we are building the kingdom of God, we care more for people and things outside our building. I'm always moved as I remember the vicar of Bibli when um, and she had to replace one of the stained glass windows. And she had this money come in and in the end she put a plain window in and sent the money to buy food and drink for people in a different country where she felt the money was more needed. Can we move to a place where our minds are more full of the kingdom of God and building that than bricks and mortar? Can we move? Should we repent to the myriad buildings dedicated to saints? And I say emphatically no. They were built as those community buildings. But we should repent of letting things change so much that a building is a block to our unity. How many people in Gower, not just in our southwest Gower, but in down the other end of Gower, Bishopston, Pen, sorry, Penard, and over the other side, avoid the United Benefits Building. United Benefit Services. How many people avoid this service because it means leaving their church? We shouldn't call the building churches because I think it's part of the problem. It's the Gilded Church, it's the March Church, it's the Mary's Church, it's you know, the Matthews, the David's, all the different churches are called church. So immediately we have a vision in our mind of a church being a building. David, King David, who killed Goliath many years ago, wanted to build a church for God. But God said he wasn't to do that, and his son would do it instead. And ever since then, God has been sort of contained in a building, fits into a building. God is there in the building. He welcomes us. It can't be contained in a building. If we think of the building as a place where God is, we immediately contain God, shrink God, to fit what we need. It's a bit of a difficult one. It's a bit of a one that asks us to think of many different things. How can we be church together? How can we be, you and me, be that building? that facilitates growth. What sort of things can we do? I wondered, how about doing something quite unique and special on Gower? How about that
But one of the churches on South Gower says, right, well, we'll ask Peter if we can do this or whoever. We'll have an evening service and we'll invite all the people from St. David's Wentford to come to an evening service with us and give them strawberry tea afterwards. <laughs>
the church building has been misused in its wording and how we look at it and how Paul at the beginning of Galatians says, who is Apollo, who is Paul, who is this? We all belong to Christ. So let us think of this as we go into our confession. And let us commit to God the fresh and the new. I need to belong to Christ and not a building. Thank you, Father. to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as the children of light. Amen.
body. So then let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another with a